Hey class, I wanted to make another help video for you because the this problem is pretty tricky. Number 66 here. It's uh, you read it right and it's okay. You're trying to help make sure that the person using these crutches, you make sure the angles right so that they are less likely to slip. Um, and so really, I mean, ultimately based on the height of the person, you're helping to size proper crutches and give guidance on how to use them which is good, important. I've actually seen people slip and fall down on crutches because of this, and it's really sad, especially um, when they have an injury. So the weird thing in this problem is we're being asked to figure out the maximum angle that the crutch can be held at and still function properly. But we're only given one thing. All we're told is that there's a coefficient of static friction between the bottom of the crutch and the ground equal to 0 0.867 and that's, that's all we're told. And we want this maximum possible angle based on that. Like, we're not told the person's weight or what percentage of the weight is on their foot versus on the crutch. We're not told how hard they're pushing off the ground. We're told nothing other than this coefficient. Seems crazy, right? Well, shoot, you're gonna have, again, this kind of process time and time again, where you have a problem, you're not really sure how to do it, you're not sure how you're gonna get an answer when you're only given one thing, but trust the process and see what happens, okay? So, what is the process? Well, we read the question, we figure out what's going on, so this person's gonna be walking, and they're gonna to try to prevent themselves from slipping based on the angle that they're holding their crutch at, okay? And we wanna find that angle, the maximum angle they can have it at without slipping. Okay, sounds good. Next step in the process, draw a free body diagram. And it's tricky for this one, all right? So here's the bottom of the crutch. We're gonna draw a free body diagram for what's going on right here, because that's where the slipping is likely to happen. So if we think about this, if this is gonna slip, it's gonna slip outward, right? It's gonna slip so that the crutch goes that direction. So since friction opposes motion, we know that friction is gonna be inward opposing that. So that's the force of static friction. All right, and since we're looking for the point where it's about to slip when the angle's at its maximum, it's nearly slipping, it's gonna be the maximum possible force of static friction. And so we know that when we're looking at the max, you go from less than or equal to to exactly equal to the coefficient multiplied by the normal force. And since this is in contact with the ground, we know that there's a normal force going straight up. And here's the part that oftentimes confuses people. Since there's a force going upward, right, on the crutch, kind of up in this direction that they call F, the force on the ground, which is the force generating the normal and the friction, is gonna be equal and opposite to that, Newton's third law. So that force, F, is gonna be this direction on the ground. And so that's one part that oftentimes confuses people. And so looking again at our picture here, I'm actually gonna zoom in just on the picture for a second here. Maybe. I'm trying to zoom in here. There we go. So I'm just making the picture bigger for just a moment. So if we look at this picture here, keep in mind, right, here's the axis of the crutch. So that force F is in this direction now. And we can see that we're shown this vertical axis here. And so since this is the angle theta, then this angle here is also theta. So I just show you that so that we understand when we come back to look at our free body diagram over here, if we make our axes, calling this x and this y, it's this angle right here that is the angle theta. All right. Okay, so we got that figured out. That's the angle theta. Let's get back into a good view here. And that's it. We got the normal force friction and that force from the crutch on the ground pushing downward. So again, since we're gonna be dealing with vector components, we might as well take and break F into X and Y components because we can see since it's at an angle theta, we know that it's gonna be partly in the X and partly in the Y direction. So if I make a little triangle out of it, I can see that my X component is the opposite side in this case. So it's gonna be F times the sine of the angle theta, and the Y component is the adjacent side right here. So it's gonna be F times the cosine of the angle theta. So once again, we proceed with our process. We have a free body diagram. 
that it helps us visualize what's going on. And they're not easy, right? The free body diagrams are tricky, but hopefully we're getting good practice with them. And so now we can look at doing some of the forces in the x direction and some of the forces in the y direction. And since we're looking at just barely avoiding slipping, we know we have maximum static, but it's still static, so we're still stationary, and our net force is still gonna be zero. So, if we look in the x direction, the only things we have is fx, which is f sine theta, and in the negative x direction, we have the force of static friction at its maximum. That's it, those two together equals zero. So we can see F sine theta equals the force of static friction max, and we know the force of static friction is the coefficient times the normal. So we have F sine theta equals the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. This is looking problematic though, right? We want theta, we don't know F, and we don't know the normal force. This is the only thing we know. So right now it looks like we have three unknowns. Oh boy howdy. Well, let's proceed with the process and just hope that things start to cancel out or we might have to get more creative, I don't know, let's see. So if we go in the Y direction now, hmm, okay, we have the normal and the positive Y, and in the negative Y we have F cosine theta, and that's it, equals zero. Okay, so we have three variables in here, none of which we know, but maybe it'll be helpful. So we have the normal equals f cosine theta. Okay, again, you don't always see the path to the answer right away, but check out what starts to happen. If we take this and plug in the normal over here, oh, interesting, wait, so we have f sine theta, I'll leave that the same on the left side, equals our coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal, which is, yeah, F cosine theta. Okay, so that's one variable gone, the normal force, which we didn't know. We still have too many things we don't know, but oh wait, check it out. F is on both sides, so we can divide through, and the force doesn't actually matter. Since it affects both things, we can actually divide through and cancel it out. Oh, interesting. So now I can divide both sides by cosine theta if I wanted to. Oh, wow, this is interesting. I love physics. So sine divided by cosine is just tangent. And on the other side, all that's left is your coefficient. So to prevent yourself from slipping, you just need to make sure that the tangent of the angle is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction, or if you want the maximum possible angle, then you really just set them equal to each other as we've done here. So from there, you can basically solve by just doing inverse tangent. Oh boy, howdy, that's so fun, I'm gonna make a smiley face. All right, so I hope that helps. Keep me posted on any questions you might have. Have a box-worthy day.